right, guys, welcome back to another video. Lots to talk about today from a big game getting another delay to PlayStation VR 2 is finally going to have a feature that I think is going to open it up to a lot more people, plus more things. But before we do start and get further in to the news, if you do enjoy daily gaming news and content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you like the video. It helps get the video out there to more people. And check out my Spotify link is in the description. So we are going now into the second half of the year. We've had the Xbox showcase. We've had separate games fest and as we know with game pass and with releases coming up xbox has a large slate of games that is going to be jam-packed you're really gonna have to kind of pick and choose what you want to play i don't know how everyone is going to be able to play every game that they do release especially their day one games coming into xbox game pass you think about indiana jones you got avowed you got flight simulator you're going to have Call of Duty Black Ops 6. All of those going into Xbox Game Pass Day 1. And another game that a lot of people were excited for that was going to be releasing, I think, just before the major other first-party games drop, which would have been after September, is Stalker 2. And it looks like that is not the case. They are delaying this game to sort out technical issues and they are going to be delaying it to i think a very heavy time where it's going to be surrounded by a bunch of other major releases and that is going to be in november so this is from gsc game world they have announced that stalker 2's delay from september 5th to november 20th and it is to give the dev team time to fix the bug so i think that's at the end of the day always a good decision always delay a game so that when it does drop it doesn't have a bunch of technical issues and then it gets hurt by people review bombing it or people just being annoyed that the frame rate isn't there you'll see all of those videos coming out looking at the stuttering frame rate and zooming in on pixels and seeing things that are just grainy and stuff so that's a good idea absolutely delay it until it is ready to go on a technical level so that when people play the game, they can have the best experience possible and that they won't drop off and go play something else. So that is a very small or smart move by them. It says today, July 25th, Soccer 2 Studio announced that its upcoming first person studio has been subjected to a two month delay, pushing it out of releasing in just a matter of weeks. And yeah, it was just around the corner. A lot of people were excited for Stalker 2, especially with all the gameplay that we have seen. And here is what they say. We know you might be tired of waiting and we truly appreciate your patience. And that is from the game director. Not even going to try to say the name. I apologize. I don't know how to say it. And it says these additional two months will give us the chance to fix more unexpected anomalies. And the anomalies, they say, are simply bugs. They say, however, the good news today for Patient Soccer 2 fans is on August 12th, a deep dive into the heart of Chernobyl will debut in collaboration with Xbox. So we're going to see a lot more about this game in just a matter of weeks. And I think a lot of people will be interested. Everything from this game that they have shown off has looked extremely high quality. I mean, graphically the atmosphere, the gunplay, everything has looked very, very good. I'm very excited for Stalker 2. I never actually played any of the first ones. This will be my first jump into it unless I play the older ones before or test them out. But from what we have seen from the gameplay trailers, game looks very good. The question though is, are people going to choose to play this game over some of the other stuff that is releasing? Because Avowed is coming out, I believe, November 12th. Indiana Jones, I don't think, has an official release date yet, but you would assume that it is going to be coming out November, December time. So it's going to be right in there with everything else that is going to be hitting Xbox Game Pass, and we'll see how well it does. I'm sure it will still do very good, but it will definitely be... Again, surrounded by a lot of competition. Now, jumping over to a game that is out and has been continuously getting good content now for a long time. That is Halo Infinite. And they're getting another massive update here on July 30th. It says the update will arrive alongside a new operation on July 30th and will bring new features like Jeff Steitzer's voice, the multiplayer announcer, going over to Forge, which I mean, the announcer is one of the iconic voices in Halo. It says the addition of the campaign music so you can play epic music on the maps and a UI nav marker or overhaul, which is going to just, I guess, make it much easier to see where things are. And senior community manager John Utick goes into more detail saying there's 1000 plus sites or vo lines 100 plus music tracks 600 new words and phrases and 500 plus new location volumes vip logic armor effects and more so forge is going to get a nice update i'm sure we will see a lot of awesome stuff come out of forge has been really really good 
in Halo Infinite. I mean, there's been so many cool things that have come out of that game mode. And it's always questions now when I look at Halo Infinite and I see it evolving and I see how good of a state it is right now, at least from the content perspective. I, I thought it was already in a good state from the gameplay perspective when launched. But the question is, where do they go? Are they can continue to support Halo Infinite for the long run with everything they have in there right now? Or are they eventually just going to let it slowly die off as they do a release the next iteration of the halo game we were seeing those reports that 343 was just going to be overseeing the halo franchise and actually doing a development for it which was eventually debunked and that that wasn't true i still think 343 is going to be making the next mainline halo game and there's probably going to be smaller spin-offs of the halo franchise that may have other studios coming in and helping and and many things can come out of it. I mean, there was the rumors about the Battle Royale mode, which I think is now dead and gone. And I feel like they shouldn't even try to go back to that. They should just kind of get back to the roots of Halo and with their next release. But as of right now, Halo Infinite is continuing to add some pretty cool stuff. And now, and next week as well, it's going to be a sad day for the Xbox 360 store. It is being shut down. So you have a few days left here to jump in there before it does get removed from existence on July 29th to go check out deals, go check out games that you don't own and go pick those up before they completely get erased from the Xbox 360 store. And another thing that you will want to check out if you care about this type of stuff are themes and gamer picks because these will all be delisted on the Xbox 360 next week. It says here, we're now just days away from the Xbox 360 store closure on July 29th, after which you'll no longer be able to purchase any digital games for the console, including a whole bunch that aren't available on any other platform. And to me, that is the biggest uh, fear here when it comes to the digital era and game preservation, when they are not available anywhere else and they're gone off of these stores, how are you going to be able to jump in and play those? And it's not just games that are going away. As I said, you're going to be able to go now get the gamer picks and the themes and everything with hundreds of free demos, gamer picks, themes, and everything that you can go and purchase for yourself. And you can see here this Reddit thread, which kind of links some of the best 360 themes to pick up if you want to just make sure that your 360 still looks cool after it does get delisted so go check that stuff out and because uh, there's only a few days left here until it completely all does go away now call of duty as we know call of duty modern warfare 3 is in xbox game pass one of the things with call of duty that they they love to sell are the Call of Duty points and the COD points and the microtransactions. And now because of Xbox Game Pass, this is another perk. When you do sign up to Xbox Game Pass, it is that things like this get on a discount. So Call of Duty points now have a discount. Again, if you're an Xbox Game Pass member, 10% off for any of those who have an active Game Pass subscription on Xbox or PC. If you're interested in the microtransactions, some cosmetics that you want, some DLC, anything like that, you have to purchase those with COD points. And now you're going to be able to get those at a disc. And I'm sure a lot of people right now are jumping into Call of Duty Modern Warfare for the first time because it did drop into Xbox Game Pass. There's a lot of excitement out there. And especially with the release of Season 5, you're going to have a lot of people having their first experiences of this year's game or i guess last year's game before this year's game call of duty black ops 6 drops into game pass at day one which i'm pretty excited to see how they evolve on that i'm actually most excited to see how they evolve on the campaign because i thought they had a good base with mw3 just wasn't fully there and there's a lot more that they can do with the future call of duty games now sea of thieves is also getting a major update season 13 is arriving and it is still going to be Obviously, on the PlayStation 5, it says here they continue to build on the PS5 success because Xbox released Sea of Thieves on the PS5, and it was a top-selling, top-downloaded game for a, a good amount there when it did launch. But here is what uh, you will be able to get, and this will be actually the first post-launch season on the PlayStation 5. And it says, The fearsome Captain Flameart has returned to the Sea of Thieves. Done with lying low after this long-awaited resurrection, this infamous warmonger has now taken his rightful place in the Reaper's hideout to kick off Season 13. He's also brought his monstrous flagship, the Burning Blade, and initiated a hunt for lost knowledge in ancient temples deep below ground. Blasting onto the scene on July 25th, so it is out now. The latest season also refreshes everyone's renowned track with 100 new levels to climb 
climb and corresponding rewards to be earned by completing daring deeds out on the waves and the update is available now and free for all players just make sure you've downloaded the latest version of the game and you'll be ready to face the burning blade the next time you set sail so it is now out there on all platforms I'm sure it'll get a lot of attention. I'm sure it'll get a lot of attention on PlayStation as, again, it was a top downloaded game. And, then, and Xbox is looking at these numbers and they're seeing everything here and saying that these types of games that people want on the other platforms are more than likely going to be continuing to go over as they will rake in more money from PlayStation users and uh, the users on other platforms and then be able to take that and invest more into First party Xbox games, Game Pass and things like that, which at the end of the day, I think was a good game, a good thing when you're getting more games and content because everybody is playing it. Now, there is another really cool game that is out. We talked about this yesterday, and that is Fallout London. If you're waiting for a new Fallout, like an official new Fallout, that's not coming for a very, very long time. But if you want a brand new experience, Fallout London is here and you can just go ahead and download it if you have the game of the year edition so right now it's only on pc but as we talked about yesterday they're hoping to be able to bring it over to xbox if the leadership there would want to do that and i think it's an absolute no-brainer to do that but follow london is out and here is just kind of a quick breakdown as to what it comes with there's 200 quests they say to change london's future 20 factions bickering for power seven companions to bring along with you on the journey 15 burrows crafted from the ground up bringing you a new warped and broken london extended dialogue system to bring player choices to the table to carve your own story there's overhaul soundtrack to bring personality to each nook and cranny and original voice acting from all the major characters gangs and factions there's also the build back better with seven unique settlements new craftable items with plethora of new weapons and dynamic new animations to bring to life so this is honestly a brand new game in fallout 4's un in engine i guess you could say as a mod for fallout 4 and they say if you own fallout 4 game of the year edition on steam you can click to access the installation instructions by team Full on. So, I mean, this is a really cool stuff. Obviously, a lot of love and work went into this, and it will be a brand new follow experience while you can play it waiting for the new game, which is something I think a lot of people will be interested in trying out. Now, PSVR 2, I do own the PSVR 2, and I have to say I've been pretty disappointed with the content for it. The actual headset itself is great. So that's why it's even more disappointing that PlayStation hasn't made very many major first party games for it and really utilize every single feature of the headset. And it seems like they've kind of given up on doing that. But one way they are going to be keeping it alive is by releasing it on Steam so you can use it on your PC, which I think is great because now I'm going to be able to play games like Half-Life Alex and stuff that I haven't played previously and the app that they are creating for steam now has an official launch date as it says here according to the steam page the app will allow players to play vr games and apps on steam using your psvr2 headset and your psvr2 sense controllers you can set up your psvr2 on your pc all you have to do is update your firmware for the controllers and the headset and it will work and this says adjust your settings for the playstation vr2 from the steam vr dashboard including setting your play area and the screen brightness and the official real estate for this app will be on august 6th which is a day before you have to get the adapter if you will do want to use it on pc on august 7th which will cost 60 dollars which is kind of crazy because the headset itself is already very expensive and they're charging another 60 dollars just to get it to play on your pc which will definitely turn some people off but i guess if you want to get some more longevity out of it and actually make use of the headset itself it's probably going to be worth the investment with the amount of good pc vr games out there and like i said the headset itself is very good the controllers are good the rumble the sound like everything in it and the screens in it very very good there are just no games the playstation kind of abandoned it right away right after it came out it was like they didn't really care too much about the psvr2 and hopefully with this it revitalizes it and then maybe there are some more psvr2 games that do come out on the playstation itself and finally a couple more things here concord although concord seems like it is doa this is based off of the beta numbers. It is not looking good at all, especially when you see something like Marvel Rivals, which had a closed beta and had over 50,000 people playing. It's going to be a direct competitor as a new first person hero shooter, which is exactly what Concord is. I don't know how many people are going to be jumping in and playing Concord, but 
PlayStation is going all out with it, and they are going to be releasing this US exclusive PS5 special edition DualSense controller with the Concord branding all over it. You can see it here. It's going to be releasing on August 23rd, and it just has some nice artwork on it, and it's just a, a black DualSense. But I mean, if nobody's going to be playing the game, how many people are actually going to be picking up the controller? We'll see. I wonder if there'll be a correlation there or people just end up picking this one up just to get a PS5 controller, even if they aren't picking up and playing Concord. One of the things, too, if nobody buys this controller, maybe it ends up being some sort of collector's item if there aren't that many out there in the wild. Another thing to think about if you're a collector out there, but we will see. I don't know how well the game is going to do. I'm not sure how many people are going to be buying this controller, but that is available for you if you were one of those few people as of right now interested in the game finally just a quick good news here for from software fans and from armored core fans it sold three million copies as they did put out a post here on x announcing that they officially sold three million copies worldwide it says from software simply thanked all the fans who played the game since launch and it released just under a year ago in august of 2023 got great reviews a lot of people were excited for this game because i believe it was the first one in in a decently long time so there was hype around it when it did launch, but I was still thinking it's kind of more of a smaller niche doll game. So selling 3 million copies worldwide is, is a great thing here for from software and for the armor cord fans, but I'm going to leave the video there. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.